Welcome back to video 3. For this video what we're looking at is we're looking at a scan of my foot where the foot is actually raised in the air. The reason this is useful is that we have some very good data around the sole, the bottom of the foot. You will notice that again there are some stray elements in the scan and there is an error on my big toe running down the top of my foot. This is a scanning error from where we could actually get the 3D scanner moving around the foot because it is cabled and it's likely you'll have a small error like this. Exactly like in previous videos, the first thing that we're going to do is separate our shells, lock the taskbar over here, find the object we want and then simply delete the additional shells and then once again we're going to select that object and try to square it up. So, once again, edit, transform, and we're going to start rotating this foot round in this plane. Then we're going to move to our front plane. We're going to rotate the foot round again. Let's go back to our right hand plane. We're going to rotate it round again, trying to get the foot flat. And you're going to start to notice one of the problems with this model. Because of how my foot was raised, you're going to notice that my toes are raised. This isn't a massive problem because we can post-process that when we start smoothing out this model for a last. But it's worth noting that how I've held my foot has put my toes in what would be an unnatural position for when I would be standing. Let's go back round again. Let's go back to the front, maybe. Have a look. Just give it a little tweak more to get it a little flatter. Go back to the right. It's looking pretty flat, it's looking pretty good, so what I'm going to do for my final view is go to the top view. I'm just going to square it along one way for later on in the modelling. Squaring it might have just altered a couple of these, so in squaring it that way, I'm just going to rotate myself back down to near flat and rotate myself around to near vertical. Give it one last check going through all the angles, that looks fairly good, and coming up here, that looks fairly good. I'm going to accept that. Next view again, what we're going to do is we're going to cut off just above the ankle here and we're going to cut it off so that we can make a last. So plain cut, flip the direction and we're going to raise it up slightly, just give myself a bit more of a foot maybe there. One thing to note is if we spin the model around you'll see that where my calf muscle is we stopped scanning. If I was to go up using this to here, you'll notice that there's an error in the model. As long as I stay lower than that error, that modeling mistake from when we've scanned in and accept it on cut and discard and remeshed fill, you'll see that actually we have a nice remeshed fill. Now, if we take this object and we try to make this scan solid, it will achieve a solid. Now you'll notice it's gone quite ugly around here and the reason for that is we've done a fast solid. Because you're trying to replicate your foot to make a last I would recommend that you do an accurate solid and once again turn up our accuracy, tune up our mesh density, we're going to update our model Looking at our updated model, we've got quite a nice sharp accurate model, we're going to accept it. Okay, so we have a foot. We've got some quite nice detail on the bottom and we've got some detail of the toes at the front. However, you're going to want to turn this foot into a last. The first thing I'm going to do is just pull it above the build area. The reason being that as I move it around now, this build plate doesn't get in the way. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the sculpt tools. Now that the object is a solid, you'll notice that you can see some of the errors in the scanning. You can see that there are rebuild errors around my toes, in particular my big toe, which I can assure you my feet don't look like this, and there are some divots. So one of the things we're going to want to do is have a quick go at sculpting this foot, because the smoother we can get this model within the computer, the less physical smoothing we have to do when we get the part off the CNC machine. So what we're actually thinking about now is how we can save ourselves some time later on. 
within the sculpt tool you have a number of brushes which is drag a point draw a point out draw a point out with more vigor flatten an area what we're actually going to use in this one is bubble smooth and bubble smooth helps you smooth out an area you'll notice our brush at the moment appears to be very large so i'm just going to drop it down to something slightly more manageable and i'm just going to turn up our strength the reason i'm turning up the strength is so that you can see this happening if you start pulling apart too much you can always hit Control z go back and reduce your strength but what i'm going to do is work in this area just to smooth it out so i'm going to use the middle button to move the part around i'm going to use the right hand mouse button to rotate and what I'm going to do is increase my size slightly and start building in some material between the toes. To do this, all I'm doing is I'm clicking with the left click and dragging over the area. And what it's doing is it's smoothing out that area. It's adding a bit more material in. It's pulling the surface up. And as I say, the more we can do at this stage, while it's digital, before we go into a resistant material, a chemical wood, the easier it is. I assure you it's far easier to sand and smooth out your toes here than it would be on a wooden model. So what we're just going to do quickly is run around here, add a bit more into that area there, add a bit more into this area here and keep working over the areas where you can see the shadows. Now your tool will allow you to drag it over the surface and add material, smooth it out. But the strength of that add is dictated by the strength and the depth of what you've set in the settings. This being said, on a single pass, it will only adhere to these settings. But you can, and as you've seen me do, produce multiple paths on top of each other. And what we're starting to get now is something more akin to a last out of our foot. Let's just have a look at the bottom. As I noted, we have that initial problem that actually my toes are quite raised and I'm not going to address all of that in the last modeling because that will be adding too much material here that's something I can do far simpler with a model in front of me by adding some body filler so all I'm going to do is try to fill in these gaps fill out the gaps under and between my toes again rotate the model round use the left click if it's a deeper area you might have to go over it a couple of times just to smooth out pull up that surface Keep filling in these areas here, keep filling in the areas between your toes, just smoothing it through, adding a bit more material. You could, if you wanted to, turn this view sideways on, so bring the view around here, and actually keep adding material until you build it down. However, it's not always necessary, so I'm going to call that good for now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to split the part again. As you saw on the first last, what we want to do is split it into two halves so we can fold out the model and lay it flat on the CNC bed. So all I'm going to do is go to plane cut, spin my model round, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my plane, again using this wheel to snap to points, snap through to 90 degrees, and then I'm going to use the top view to line this up to get a good cut. So I'm going to use this to rotate it and actually I think that's probably going to be about my angle. Change the settings again to slice and keep both halves and remeshed fill. I'm going to cut through. The model once again doesn't look like anything's happened until I click separate shells and now I have two halves to make my last with. And again as in the last video after we've exported both halves of the foot as STLs, what we're going to do is we're going to import these files into Cura. So once again, I'm going to grab the two files and I'm going to open them up. It takes a little bit longer to process because they're larger files, they have more detail on, because instead of being a flat-sided last, they're actually a foot. But once the files import, once again, I'm just going to separate them out slightly so I can see both of them, dragging them around using the move icon. I'm then going to quickly rotate it in this plane, which is the red plane, using the snap to to get to 90. 
and I'm going to click the lay flat feature. This takes again a little bit more processing as you can see because obviously they're a more complicated file. That model is laid flat so the last thing I'm going to do is enter zero as you can see there is the z-axis this drops it onto the bed that file is now ready for CNC. With the second foot I'm going to do exactly the same process so click rotate pull it round to 90 degrees lay it flat which will take the processing and now that's done I'm going to grab transform I'm just going to pull it so it doesn't actually interact with this first foot and I'm going to change the Z value to zero and what you'll see now is you'll see we have both feet that are ready to be exported as STLs again so once again if we click save it's going to export these files as something called a G code that's for 3D printing and if you wanted to 3D print these feet that's what you would do but in this case we want to CNC them so we're going to click export we're going to call it flat feet so we know that it's both feet and they're flat and we're going to change the file type to STL once we click save these files will be ready to CNC downstairs in the workshop